on World News Tonight. Record Outbreak Bangladesh suffers its worst dengue outbreak on record as death surpassed 1,000. Trump on trial Donald Trump attends his much speculated NYC fraud trial amid surmounting legal vows. Nobel worthy COVID vaccine pioneers win the 2023 Nobel Prize in Medicine. Tailored Classics Louis Vuitton kicks off Spring Runway Show in Paris with a geometric touch. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. We've got a number of coverages lined up for you. Tonight we begin as Bangladesh battles its worst dengue outbreak on record. More than 1,000 people have died from dengue in Bangladesh with rising temperatures due to the climate crisis driving the ongoing spread. More cases are reported away from dense urban centres for the first time, while dengue fever is endemic in a South Asian country with infections typically peaking during the monsoon season between July and September this year. This year, the uptick in cases startled much earlier. A prolonged monsoon season that saw warmer temperatures combined with irregular heavy rainfall created ideal breeding conditions for the mosquitoes, which carries a dengue disease. The influx of patients has strained the country's healthcare system and hospitals have faced a shortage of beds and staff to care for them. Fertilities from the outbreak are almost four times higher than last year. According to the Bangladesh Health Authorities, in September alone, there were more than 79,600 reported cases and 396 deaths. A viral infection, dengue causes flu-like symptoms including piercing headaches, muscle and joint pains, fever and in some cases internal bleeding and death. It is transmitted to humans through the bite of an infected mosquito and there is no specific treatment for the disease. There are calls from public health experts in Bangladesh to make dengue more of a priority and focus on prevention methods including early detection and access to adequate health services. Updates on the Trump fraud trial Aggrieved and defiant, former President Donald Trump spent a day in court for the testy start of a trial in a fraud lawsuit that could cost him control of Trump Tower and other prized properties. Tonight, former President Trump in court, stone-faced at the defense table for the opening of the civil trial that threatens to shatter the success story at the heart of his brand. New York Attorney General Letitia James in court too, staring at Trump from her seat in the front row. She's accusing the former president of being a fraud and a liar. No matter how powerful you are, no matter how much money you think you may have, no one is above the law. On the bench, Judge Arthur N. Gorin, who has already dealt Trump a severe blow, ruling he did commit fraud, inflating his net worth by as much as $2.2 billion by overvaluing much of his real estate empire. It could mean Trump will have to give up control of his signature properties in New York. In court today, lawyers for the state arguing Trump lied year after year, and they had the receipts. Take the Trump Tower penthouse. The state says the Trump Organization inflated its value by some $200 million, declaring it was 30,000 square feet. But the Attorney General's team showed Trump's signature on a document certifying the apartment is actually a third that size, 11,000 square feet. And while Trump said Mar-a-Lago was worth up to $600 million, the state contends its assessed value is actually no more than $27 million. And they played video from the deposition of Trump's former lawyer and fixer Michael Cohen, who says he and former chief financial officer Alan Weisselberg artificially boosted the value of certain properties at Trump's direction if, say, he wanted to move up on the Forbes list of the wealthiest people. Mr. Trump would call Alan and I into the office and let's say it said he was worth six billion dollars well he wanted to be higher on the Forbes list and he then said I'm actually not worth six billion I'm worth seven in fact I think it's actually now worth eight with everything that's going on Alan and I were tasked with taking the assets increasing each of those asset classes in order to accommodate that eight billion dollar number Trump's lawyers said real estate values, even square footage, are subjective and the Trump properties are Mona Lisa properties, suggesting they're priceless. 
Throughout opening statements, Trump sitting with his arms crossed, shaking his head. He sometimes muttered under his breath, often whispering with his attorneys. He wasn't required to be in court today, but he came anyway and several times spoke to reporters in the hallway, attacking Attorney General James and Judge Ngoran. Trump was given the option of a jury trial, but his lawyers didn't take it, and now his fate is in the hands of the judge. This is a judge that should be disbarred. This is a judge that should be out of office. Using familiar language from the Trump playbook. So very simply put, it's a witch hunt. It's a disgrace. Moving on to Serbia now. Serbia has withdrawn some troops stationed near the border of Kosovo. The troops have withdrawn after having increased in numbers deployed there, following a gun battle in northern Kosovo. Foreign peacekeepers on the street. This is a familiar scene in parts of northern Kosovo, and it's about to step up a notch. 600 additional British troops are to be deployed to bolster the NATO-led force in Kosovo, amid reports Serbia was amassing troops along the shared border. Kosovo's foreign minister said she was worried about the build-up of military equipment, telling German media the weaponry they have there, the tanks. There has never been this kind of concentration of troops in recent years. The comments come after the United States said it was monitoring what it called a troubling military build-up by Serbian forces. Kosovo called for urgent action, asking the European Union to consider freezing Serbia's candidacy status. Belgrade said its troop presence along the border had returned to normal and dismissed alarm over its military movements as part of a campaign of lies. In the last few days, the United States has told many lies about the presence of our military forces. We will continue to invest in the defense of our country, but Serbia wants peace. Tensions spiked a week ago as dozens of heavily armed Serbian gunmen fought with police in northern Kosovo before fleeing across the border. One officer was killed in one of the worst clashes since Kosovo declared independence from Serbia in 2008. NATO has called for calm and demanded the neighbours resume dialogue as soon as possible. Hungarian scientist Katalin Kariko and her US colleague Drew Wellesman have been awarded the 2023 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for their role in the development of the COVID-19 mRNA vaccine. The 2023 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine jointly to Katalin Kariko and Drew Wiseman for their discoveries concerning nucleoside base modifications that enabled the development of effective mRNA vaccines against COVID-19. One of the most prestigious prizes in the scientific world has been awarded to two scientists whose discoveries helped in the fight against the global pandemic. The Hungarian and American duo worked on the breakthrough research through the University of Pennsylvania. Carico found a way to prevent the immune system from launching an inflammatory reaction against lab-made mRNA, a major hurdle against any therapeutic use of mRNA. Together with Wiseman, she showed in 2005 that adjustments to nucleosides, the molecular letters that write the mRNA's genetic code, can keep the mRNA under the immune system's radar. Here they are speaking to back in April. I'm not a, you know, a, a, a Hollywood actor who loves to be in front of the audience and, and, and take you know, credit for things like this. So, you know, my, my job was to make a vaccine and, and I did it. It is a very uh, safe and uh, very important <laughs> vaccine and uh, there are more will come and all will be very beneficial for the people. The prize of $1 million kicks off the year's awards with the remaining five to be unveiled in the coming days. Tonight's road to the White House now. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is reported to be ending his challenge to Joe Biden for the Democratic presidential nomination and run instead as an independent candidate in a move that could upset the 2024 race for the White House. 
Kennedy feels that the Democratic National Committee is changing the rules to exclude his candidacy, so an independent run is the only way to go. Kennedy is an attorney and made his name as an environmental campaigner before achieving notoriety as a prominent vaccine skeptic, particularly over the COVID-19. His campaign has been raffled with controversy not least in a podcast interview released in which he repeated a conspiracy theory about the 9-11 attacks on New York. His campaign has also been roiled by an anti-Semitism scandal after Kennedy told reporters at a press diner that COVID-19 was ethnically targeted at white people and black people, while Jews and Chinese people had greater immunity. The false claim was embraced by neo-Nazi groups and condemned by scientists and Jewish organizations. Pollings have shown Kennedy performing relatively well against Biden, the incumbent president in the Democratic primary, but not close to posing a serious threat. Welcome back. The United Nations Security Council authorized a foreign security mission to Haiti. It's been a year since the Caribbean country asked for help to fight violent gangs that have largely overrun its capital, Port-au-Prince. The UN Security Council vote on Monday cleared the way to send a multinational force to Haiti to help combat violent gangs that continue to plague the Caribbean country. The council voted by 13 in favour of the motion proposed by Ecuador with China and Russia abstaining. The peacekeeping force will be headed by Kenya, which has pledged 1,000 police. Caribbean countries including Jamaica, Antigua, the Bahamas and Barbuda have also offered to help. This mission comes at the request of the Haitian government and Haitian civil society to address the insecurity and dire humanitarian crisis the country has faced for far too long. Haiti's foreign minister underlined the urgency of the situation. On behalf of the government and the people of Haiti, I would like to thank all of those for their voices, their efforts, their support and their contribution of all sorts. They have finally made today's decision possible. This vote is more than just a simple vote. This is in fact an expression of solidarity with a population in distress. The force should be in place by the end of the year for an initial duration of 12 months. Marauding gangs have plunged Haiti, one of the world's poorest country, into anarchy in recent years. More than 2,400 people have been killed in the country this year and more than 950 people have been kidnapped. Next, we have some good news for you. New South Wales police and ambulances have rolled out a revolutionary digital platform which uses our mobile phones to put emergency responders instantly on scene. Walking home and into danger. I think I'm being followed. But police are watching. We can see him. This is how UK authorities use technology to fight crime. Anyone who calls emergency services can opt in to share camera, microphone and location. An officer will be with you very soon. It's all thanks to a digital platform, Good Sam, now being piloted by the New South Wales Police Force. It's already changing the game for police, fire and ambulance services around the world. So they may see the scene before ever arriving. Good Sam has another very powerful function as a mobile phone app for cardiac arrest. It's a very survivable disease if someone gets on, starts doing CPR early and uses a defibrillator early. Invented by British neurosurgeon Dr Mark Wilson. Anyone trained in first aid can join the app, alerted by emergency services if someone is having a heart attack nearby. So creating that community of people who will look after their neighbours. A community that's thriving in Victoria, adopted by its ambulance service in 2018. It's an absolute crucial tool, I think. <laughs> in May, it helped save Brenda Beatty's life. Just lucky, you know, how things could have been. The Mildura nurse had a major heart attack at home. Volunteer firefighter Lockie Shaw was alerted through the app and rushed to help. Good Sam had even given him a defibrillator. Really grateful that they were able to come quick. We're at the beginning of a journey in many ways. As we grasp a safer future at our fingertips. 
a first for any Asian country. Indonesia inaugurated its first high-speed railway named Wush. This connects Jakarta with the city of Bangdad, completing a China-backed project that has been plagued by delays and other problems. Indonesia launched its long-delayed $7.3 billion high-speed railway on Monday. President Joko Widodo inaugurated the line connecting the capital Jakarta with the city of Bandung. He said it was the first such line anywhere in Southeast Asia. The railway runs just over 88 miles and is one of Widodo's flagship infrastructure projects. It's also a sign of China's growing influence in the region. Beijing has supported the project as part of its controversial Belt and Road Initiative and a consortium of Indonesian and Chinese companies built the railway. Indonesian Minister Luhut Binsar Panjaitan. However, on this historical day, we prove that this project can be completed and operated. This wouldn't happen without good teamwork from all parties, including the central government, local government, state-owned enterprises, private sector and public as well as the Chinese government and its related companies, all working together to finish this project. The project faced numerous problems including growing costs, land procurement issues and health crisis delays. Monday's launch of the bullet train called Whoosh is way behind an original target of operations in 2019. Officials said the train could reach 217 miles per hour. Now, the launch of the line will be welcome news for China ahead of a Belt and Road Summit in Beijing later this month. Italy, the sole G7 nation to participate, is considering withdrawing from the initiative, saying a previous government there should never have signed up. In other related news now, South Korean researchers have developed a drug that may help others with weight loss. Let's take a look. These mice gained weight after eating a high-fat diet and are larger than regular mice. Conversely, these other mice also ate a high-fat diet but did not gain weight. Comparing their weights, the latter were half as heavy. This came from daily administering a new drug developed by South Korean researchers. The weight of the mice receiving the drug decreased by around 35 percent and was similar to that of mice on a regular diet. The researchers targeted an obesity-suppressing switch in the brain called GABRA5. Located in the lateral hypothalamus of the brain, GABRA5 is a cluster of nerve cells connected to fat cells throughout the body. When GABRA5 is active, the buildup of fat within the body is suppressed. When its activity weakens, the opposite occurs. The researchers found that star-shaped cells in the brain secreted an enzyme called MAO-B. Mao B then synthesized a neurotransmitter, GABA, to turn off the obesity suppressing switch. When they administered KDS2010, a Mao B inhibitor they developed, the switch was turned on, thereby suppressing obesity. This is the first time researchers have shown the exact mechanism of how the brain is involved in fat metabolism. Originally developed as a treatment for Alzheimer's, we believe it can be administered orally with minimal side effects and almost no rebound effect. Clinical phase 1 trials to observe side effects of KDS2010 in humans are currently underway. Phase 2 trials will be conducted from 2024 to determine if the drug produces weight loss in humans. Welcome back. Bushfires flare in parts of Southeast Australia. For more on that story and more, let's take you around the world in a minute. A bushfire in Australia's Victoria State trebled overnight, and authorities issued several emergency warnings in parts of New South Wales as a spring heat wave fanned fires across the country's southeast. Heartland Republican Rep Matt Gates continued to tease introducing a motion to the new House Speaker Kevin McCarthy over his moves to avert a government shutdown. According to the Ukrainian military, Russian hardware on south of Tumak is on fire. The video was recorded near the settlement of Switzerland, 20 kilometers southeast of the Russian occupied town of Tumak. Taiwan issued a land warning ahead of the arrival of Typhoon Koi which is expected to bring heavy rains and winds to large parts of the island's south and east. A huge fireball hit the night sky over the southern British city of Oxford, 
According to police, they were attending the scene of a fire, believed to have been caused by a lightning strike on gas containers near the city of Oxford. That is all we have for you on World News tonight. If you miss any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight in Paris as Louis Vuitton women's wear designer sent out a lineup of tailored styles with a geometric touch for the label's spring runaway show. Thank you for watching. Good night.